Doug, you got one. I do. Where's my phone? I'm losing everything <laughs> over here. I do have an app. It's one that uh, actually was just updated recently, mm-hmm. and since they have, it works now. <laughs> well, that's always good. I, it's a plus. I, I have to give them credit. Uh, and this is for the Android. It, there is one for the iPhone, There's too. There's the iPhone, too, it looks like. Yes, but I... Am I the only one with a droid? Does everybody have iPhones? I, I got a, I got a tablet. I'll give you a All right, you can. That's you're good then. You're good to go. You can pretty much see the same thing. Um, so the app that I have is Shoebox from Ancestry.com. And as more people under the age of I don't know sixty five are doing family trees now, <laughs> myself included, because <laughs> when I go to the library to do genealogy stuff, uh, the lady looks at me like, "Are you serious?" Because everybody else there is like it's an older group that usually does this stuff, but I'm full blown like into genealogy stuff right now. So what the app will do is if you're out and about and you, you know, say you're at a cemetery or you're somewhere where you need to take a picture, you find an article in a book somewhere, and you you don't have access to a, a copier or a scanner or anything else, it'll allow you to take a picture of that document. You can edit it in on your phone. And then submit it straight to your family tree to the person that it's associated with. It's kind of showing that here in the video. So, like, you take a picture, and it was actually like, like you can kind of see in the background, like it's actually taking the bit of a picture and cropping it out from the mm-hmm. picture you took on the table, and then sees the picture that I'm presuming is doing facial recognition or tagging or something, or you know, you have to put who it you select who it's going to be associated with. Okay, okay. But you could put your information as where you took the picture at, um, the date of when it should be added to. Like for instance, I took one of a, a document that I found of my great grandfather in Germany from 1881. Well, I, I couldn't get that on the scanner to work right, so I just I was like, all right, well, I got the new shoebox app. I'm gonna give this a try, and it came out perfect. Not just perfect, like it, it would not just fit my phone, but when I blew it up to zoom in, like I was getting the details now of like there was something apparently on the back of it that I didn't know before. Mm-hmm. So I could see some of that writing on there. So when I flipped it over, you could faintly see something's there. So kind of working to figure out what it says. But really, and I I gave Chilla the, the document once, one of the documents I found, and we both kind of looked at it like, okay, this is really old German. <laughs> like somebody around here is going to be able to figure out how to translate this thing. But it wasn't just the the font that they were using. It's because it was a lot mostly handwritten, so it was tough to tell what letters were supposed to be which. But it, it is really cool with skinny documents, and the the quality has been fantastic. Like especially for zooming in, like it's I could take that to the library then and show it to the librarian and say, okay, here's what this document says. For instance, I also found the naturalization paper from my great grandfather, and I said, here it is. Here's the person who signed for it, but he's not showing up in this book that you have of naturalized citizens in Pittsburgh because I had the name of the person who signed for it. She was able to help me look it up. So it's one of those where by looking at, you know, a full blown photo of, of that document that she was able to help me. Hmm. So it's just another tool to had to add for your, uh, your genealogy digging. Now does this pull into like an- ancestry.com has their own kind of service there, like on ancestry.com, right? Like does this kind of feed into that service? Yes, yeah, so, so this will go to your family tree on Ancestry. Okay. So you have to have an account on there. and So this uh, is like an extended tool. Of, yes. It's the, just that. another tool to help you out. Uh, I actually used it once when I was up in Erie. I visited the, uh, the city archives, and they had a listing for like cemetery listings. So I was able to copy the listings of everyone in my family with, using Shoebox and then associate that with each of the people that were in there on the fly while I'm at the library. So and, this replaces you having to get the, get the document, bring it home, scan it, mm-hmm. something like that. It's just snagging up like this, which is kind of like, that's kind of how I use Evernote is like, okay, I got this receipt. I take mm-hmm. the document version of the picture and it's a pretty good readable black and white photo in the long run and does whatever with the flash it needs to right. to make sure it's nice and even and everything. Um, it, it sounds like kind of that version of this for, for family tree. The other cool thing with it too is a lot of libraries – and I guess their genealogy departments. Um, when you go in to use their their microfilm machines, which a lot of them still everything is on microfilm. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you go in there and use the machines, they're hooked up to these god awful bulky laser printers. And you, when you make the co- when you make the copy of what's on the screen, 
you don't know how it's going to look when it comes out. It doesn't necessarily look just like that. You have to adjust the color. And every time you do that, you have to keep paying for it. And you have to pay with dimes. <laughs> dimes? I, I, I can't even make this up. I've been to six libraries. It's like 15 years old. It's like a uh, ditto machine. It's, it's <laughs> bad. It's, I, think I, I think I sold the HP 5XL back in the 90s, and that's what they're using. Like, it, it's bad. It's probably like the last parallel printer known to man. <laughs> but it's also one of those things where they don't have new microfilm machines to look at these. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what they're, they're kind of stuck with. And I was hoping that you know someone out there would have the technology to, as soon as I, I get that picture that I want to take, scan it, send it to me, email it to me, do something with it. Don't put it out on this 11 by 17 paper that now I can't read because I have to adjust the, the, you know, the darkness level or the brightness level. And sometimes you have to flip between negative and, and how it looks. And yeah, it's just, there, I think there's a lot of good use with this app to help you help a lot of younger people get into genealogy too. Cause once you pick up on your family tree and you discover something, mm -hmm. it's, it's like crack because I totally got sucked into it because we know nothing about my dad's family. And I, once I found that found out that first clue, uh, yeah, I, I got sucked in and that was like six, seven years ago. Yeah, and the ancestry isn't cheap. There is a way behind this. <laughs> oh, here's, here's the here's the hot tip. Here's the hot ancestry. tip, and this and is the tip of the week. Tip of the week. Th this is a pretty. This is a good one. If you're getting started out with with ancestry, and I, I've told a lot of friends this, buy the family tree maker. I believe it's the platinum edition, which you can get for about seventy five dollars. I think they still make that right now. The one I have is from 2011, 2012. I bought that off Amazon. I think it was for like seventy five bucks, and you get set. You you get. Uh, six months of the U.S. version for free. So six months access to all their U.S. records. Which is $99 alone. <laughs> if so you go through Amazon yeah, so Ancestry. You're, you're getting the, basically, you're getting the, the service for free and you're paying for software. That one? That's it, yes. So Family Tree Maker, which is, uh, I'm on something called novadevelopment.com and it's like 80 bucks. Yeah, so if you pick that up, you get the six months free and it, so you load it on your machine, but so you'll have the local copy of it, but what you could do is you sync it with your your account online so that you're constantly sharing information. So it will always keep your information up to date on their website. Once you get close to that six months, reinstall the software. <laughs> no way. I am dead serious. No way. I have not paid for it. Well, okay, Instressory, if you're watching, <laughs> I have not paid for your service in like three years because that, that's what happens. And I'm going to keep doing it. Well, so for educational purposes, <laughs> I'm going to keep doing that. <laughs> but it, it is an expensive service is the thing. Uh, yeah. But there is a ton of information. You just have to get around the hurdles okay, to figure okay. stuff out. I presume out. we need to get the old version. There is a new and an old version listed on on Amazon. So, so keep an old machine around. So keep an old machine running. Well, hey, we all got Windows XP. I'm sure we'll talk about that, that here in a moment. Uh, it runs on my Vista machine. That I